Hello and welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Yes, it's finally happening. I am finishing my playthrough of the Space Crusade Renegade campaign. I know this has been a long time coming, but I really wanted to wrap up the story. Not least because Games Workshop recently announced a Forge World miniature for Hermiatus, the self-same scientist who got himself infected with Gene Stealer Juice and who my Terminators have been hunting down throughout this campaign. But we do have some minor issues to overcome. 1. At this point I have played 4 of the 5 missions in the campaign and the Terminators, despite one incredibly poor showing, have already accumulated enough points to win, making this final instalment somewhat anticlimactic. And 2. It has been a good long while since the last instalment of this series and I doubt many people can remember what the hell has happened so far. So, we are wiping the slate clean. Sort of. In order to make sure you can enjoy this playthrough without having seen any of the previous playthroughs, we are going to carry over all of our perks and benefits from previous missions, but this is going to be an all or nothing showdown. Hermiatus must be captured at all costs. He has mutated into a form of Gene Stealer hybrid and he cannot be allowed to share his Imperial secrets with the enemy. A Terminator squad with a Librarian has been sent to locate him. Kill Hermiatus and the Terminators win. If the Terminators are wiped out, Hermiatus escapes and the Alien player wins. No second chances, no points, this is sudden death. Thanks to previous successes, our Terminator commander has achieved the highest rank of Captain Senioris. That means he starts this mission with all four of his order cards. Close Assault, Bisections, Move It and Fire. Additionally, he has five honor badges. We are going to cash in two of those badges to take a Librarian, and that Librarian is going to have four Psychic Powers. Lightning Arc, Teleport, Burst of Speed, and Smite. That means our Terminator squad will comprise the Commander with Power Sword and Storm Bolter, the Librarian with Force Axe and Storm Bolter, one Terminator with a Heavy Flamer and Power Fist, and two Terminators with Storm Bolters and Power Fists. With three honor badges left, our Terminator squad can access seven pieces of equipment. Normally, we would have to give up four of those to pay for Terminator armor, but for this final mission, the Terminator armor comes for free. That being the case, we can take a medikit and digital weapons for the commander. This gives us the ability to heal all damage once per mission, and it gives us a reroll on all close combat and ranged attacks. We will then take two targeters, one for the Storm Bolters and one for the Heavy Flamer. And we can't leave home without some grenades. Blind grenades to prevent enemies attacking us once, and a melter bomb for any large targets we might need to deal with. Finally, we will take the bio scanner, which we can use to reveal blips on the map. That should help us locate Hermiatus quickly. For this mission, the alien player is fully loaded and ready for trouble. They get access to all blip tokens and all reinforcement tokens. But it should be noted that all Orc reinforcement tokens actually represent Gene Stealer hybrids. Additionally, our Chaos Marine Commander blip is not going to be a commander. It represents Hermiatus. Of course, if you have been keeping up with this campaign, unlike me, you will know the Alien player had a much better time of it in Mission 4 and earned some perks too. The Alien player is now a Champion of Chaos, which means they will get to draw two Alien event cards at the start of the game. They can play these on their turn instead of drawing a card from the deck. The cards we have drawn are Psychic Attack and Alien Task Force. Neither of these cards are going to be useful in this game, but at least we have removed them from the deck, which means we won't draw them at a bad time. Additionally, the Alien player has one Mark of Chaos, which means they should have one extra reinforcement token for the mission. However, as we are using every single reinforcement token anyway, we ignore this rule. And that means we are just about ready. Now, as I am playing solo, we have to modify the rules slightly. In order to make the hunt for Hermiatus a bit more exciting and random, I have taken all of my blips and divided them into four stacks. I am then going to allocate one of these stacks to each of the four quadrants of the board. I know the stack I have allocated to the first quadrant does not contain Hermiatus, but he could appear in any of the other three stacks. So, I do not know exactly where he is, and I do not know how many aliens I will have to fight through to get to him. With all of that done, it is time to dock and deploy for the last time in the Space Crusade Renegade mission. 
This is it. Death or glory. Strap in. Let's get things started with the Space Marines' first turn. We are going to activate one of our regular grunts with a Storm Bolter. We have a movement of four, so we will use three movement points to get into the corridor. We will open the door to our left, which is a free action. And then we will sidestep to our right, and we will open that door as well. As a Marine has finished their turn in an unexplored quadrant of the board, we now place our blips. Remember, I have divided the blips into four stacks. I do not know what these blips are. They have been randomly distributed. The only thing I do know is Hermiotus will not be appearing in this first quadrant. I am a big fan of putting blips directly behind doors, so that is what I have done. Next, we are going to advance the rest of the squad into the sector. Something like that will do just fine. With that done, the alien player takes their first turn, starting by drawing an alien event card. And the first event card we have drawn is Equipment Malfunction. Pick one equipment card owned by any one Marine player. That equipment card is then lost due to Malfunction. That is an easy choice. We are picking the Medi Kit. This is something that could have saved the Commander's life when he was low on hit points. Without this, it's going to be much easier for the Alien player to kill him. Speaking of which, let's get stuck in. We are going to open the door directly in front of the Marines and we reveal those first two blips. It's an orc and an android. So we are going to use our android to attack the Terminator with the Storm Bolter in close combat. We roll two red dice. And we have rolled two, that's not bad. In retaliation, the Terminator rolls a red dice and a white dice. Remember, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the loser will take damage equal to the difference between their roll and their opponent's roll. And we have rolled five. That is a massive hit, and that android is completely destroyed. Fortunately, in this mission, the alien player has access to a lot of units. So even though we have lost that android, we have many more, and hopefully the weight of numbers will eventually take a toll on the marines. Let's attack in hand-to-hand -hand combat with our orc. He charges in and rolls two white dice. And he's rolled two. Again, not a bad hit. But the Terminator rolls a 3, so not only does the Terminator defend the attack, they actually parry and kill the Orc. Right, let's activate this next blip. It moves into the corridor and reveals, and it is a Gretchen. That Gretchen is going to stay where it is and shoot. And we are going to target that Terminator with the Storm Bolter, who has already given us quite a lot of trouble. Terminators have an armor class of 3, so when we are shooting them, we will need to roll at least 4 successes to kill them and double zeros is not going to cut it. Let's see what this other blip is. It moves into view, and it's a Chaos Marine with a missile launcher. We will back off, and then we will drop a missile directly on that Terminator with the Storm Bolter. Missile launchers roll two red dice. The total value of those dice will be applied to the target. The value of the highest dice will be applied to all models in surrounding squares. As red dice only go up to 3, that means it is impossible to kill a Terminator with the splash damage from a missile launcher. However, there is a good chance we can kill this Terminator that we are targeting. But we don't, we roll double 1. We needed at least 4. We open the door on the left. The first blip advances. As soon as it gets to there, it becomes visible to the Space Marine Commander. And it is another android. Androids have a movement of 4, we have used one movement point to get into view, that means we have more than enough movement points remaining to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Again, we are going to target that Terminator with the Storm Bolter. This Terminator's luck has to run out eventually. And 3 successes is a big roll for this android, that is bad for the Marines. But we roll three in retaliation. We just scrape a draw. Neither combatant is removed. That other blip on the left, we aren't going to bring that into combat. We're going to move it so it stays hidden. We can use it as an ambush later. Then we open the door on the right. We advance the first blip. And once it gets to there, it becomes visible. And it is an orc. The only available target is the Terminator Commander. Not really any chance of doing a lot of damage on the Terminator Commander, but an Orc is going to Orc, so let's do it anyway. We have to wipe out this squad eventually, so we'll give it a go. The Orc rolls two white dice. 
Rolling two. The commander has a power sword and rolls two red dice. And rolls five. A massive hit and this combat goes the way we kind of thought it would. Let's get our final blip on the right into the action. We reveal it. It's another orc and we may as well use it to fight the commander. Two white dice again. Just one success, that's not great. And the Terminator Commander rolls four. So again, another orc head gets added to the pile. Well, that wasn't great, but we are going to bring in some reinforcements now to try to help us out. We can bring in up to six reinforcement tokens in this top left quadrant of the map. I have access to every reinforcement blip in the game, so I have loads to pick from. However, Orc reinforcement tokens do not represent Orcs in this mission. Instead, each of those tokens represents a Gene Stealer hybrid. So I am going to bring in six hybrids to see what they can do. Just like that, they can activate from the next alien player's turn. At the start of the new Space Marine turn, we are going to activate our commander. He is going to charge into hand-to-hand -hand combat with that Chaos Marine with the missile launcher. He rolls two red dice. And he has rolled four successes. That is huge. The lowly Chaos Marine defends with two white dice. And rolls double zero. That is an easy kill for our commander. Next, the Terminator who has survived an onslaught from the alien player is going to move to attack that Gretchen in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He gets in there and attacks in hand-to-hand -hand combat with one red and one white dice. Rolling a three. There is no way the Gretchen can defend that, it is killed. Next, we're going to use our Librarian to try to take down this android. Librarians are pretty awesome in hand-to-hand -hand combat with their force axes. They roll two red and two white dice. And we have rolled four successes, not bad. The android defends. And rolls three, not enough, not even enough for a draw. The android is destroyed. We will advance our other marine with the storm bolter and then we are going to advance our heavy flamer now that heavy flamer can target the space directly in front of the unrevealed blip we roll two red dice and because this is a heavy flamer not a regular flamer all of the spaces surrounding the target space will be hit for the combined value of the two red dice and we roll a three that should be enough to kill most things Let's reveal the blip and see what we got. It was just a Gretchen, so the Heavy Flamer was absolute overkill. That finishes the Space Marine turn and we have cleared the quadrant and we haven't even taken any casualties. Things are going pretty well at the moment. But it's now the Alien player's turn, so we draw an Alien event card. Auto Defense, you may shoot at any one Marine or Commander miniature on a corridor square. Roll one Heavy Weapons die. Now, as red dice only go up to three and Space Marine Terminators have an armor class of three, it is impossible for any of my Marines to be killed by this card. Which means it's just time to activate our Gene Stealer hybrids. There they are, all the way up there. Each one has a move of six. So we are going to scurry them all down and position them so that we can start hunting these Terminators. Look at them, horrid little things. They need exterminating. And of course, we can drop some more reinforcements as well. One of the cool things we can do is we can actually play two Orc reinforcement blips together to bring into play a Gene Stealer hybrid with a heavy weapon. And that's what we're going to do. And there is only one possible option. We are bringing in a conversion beamer because they roll two red dice and you have to roll under the target's armor class. That is very bad for Terminators. But that is me out of Orc Blips, so I cannot bring in any more Gene Stealer hybrids in this mission. But while I'm bringing in the heavy weapons, I may as well bring in another Chaos Marine with a missile launcher. And why not? Let's throw in a couple of androids too. Let's really put some pressure on our Marines. With all of those hybrids scurrying around to the west, we obviously want to go that way and engage them. If we go north, they will swing around behind us, they will capture us in a pincer maneuver, and that would be bad. So let's go and deal with the hybrids first. And that's that. We move each of the Terminator's four spaces. We have nothing else we can do, nothing we can see, nothing we can shoot at, nothing we can interact with. We end our turn.
we draw an alien event card, and we get the communications malfunction play on one of the marine players, that player may not use any order cards on his next turn. Okay, so no order cards for us. As you can see, there is a terrible wave of death about to descend upon the marines. Let's cause some devastation, we're going to activate our hybrids and we are going to try and kill a few terminators. First we will activate the ones in the green room. We're going to move this hybrid one space and then he will open the door. He's then going to advance into the corridor and he's going to open that door. And he now has eyes on the marines, so he's going to move into the room and he's going to take a pot shot at the closest terminator. Hybrids are pretty good shots, they roll a red dice and a white dice. Here we go. It's a one, not even close. Still, we have more hybrids. That one is going to move to there, he is also going to shoot at that leading terminator with the storm bolter. And that's a two. Closer, but still not close enough. And the rest of the alien forces are just going to advance and take up better ambush positions. Look at that. That's an ugly mess the marines are going to have to deal with. But it is time for the marines to do what marines do best. First things first, our Librarian is going to use an ability. He is going to use Burst of Speed. This will allow him to take two turns in succession. He moves three squares to there and opens the door. He then moves one more square. He will now immediately get to take a second action, but before he does that, we have to place a new load of blips. We randomly grab a stack. This stack may or may not contain Hermiatus. And we're going for something a little bit different here. We are going for a scattered approach for these blips. Now, back to our Librarian's turn. He gets a movement of four, which puts him in the corridor where he can attack this hybrid with two red and two white dice. And he has rolled four. A very good hit. The hybrid rolls two white dice in defense. And rolls double zero, and therefore dies. Next, we are going to activate our commander. He moves four spaces to there, and he will attack the hybrid in hand-to-hand -hand combat with two red dice. And we have rolled a two. We do have digital weapons, which allows us to re-roll one of these dice if we want to. It is a bit risky, but I think we will. And the risk pays off. We have rolled a two. That gives us a total of three. The hybrid rolls two white dice. And rolls double zero, so even without that reroll we had, we still would have defeated it. Next, we are going to advance one of our Terminators with a Storm Bolter. Three movement points to there, and he opens the door. And what do we see? Gretchen and a Chaos Marine. Nothing too much to worry about there. We have one movement point left, we are going to use it to advance into the room. And we are going to shoot the Hybrid, because the Hybrid has an armor class of zero. We roll one red and one white dice. Scoring a 5, that is some serious overkill. Next, I'm going to activate my Heavy Flamer. He can go there and he can drop a Flamer shot directly between the Chaos Marine and the Gretchen. A chance to kill two things at once. And we have rolled three. That actually kills the Gretchen and the Chaos Marine. Excellent stuff. We have one Terminator left to activate. He will just advance four spaces. That finishes our activations, but it does not finish our turn. There is one more thing we need to do, something very important indeed. We need to chuck some blind grenades. You throw the blind grenade at the end of your turn. The alien player may not attack any of your miniatures on his next turn. Discard this card after use. That is really important to do because you may or may not have noticed that my librarian is directly in line of sight of that conversion beamer it almost certainly would have killed him. But now the alien player draws a card. It's a gene stealer, it's going to pop adjacent to one of my marines, but as I just played blind grenades, it will not be able to attack this turn. So that was some good timing for the marines. Well, as much as I would like to hide this gene stealer to use him later on, I do have to place him adjacent to a marine, so we may as well place him here next to the flamer, like so. I guess he can just stick his tongue out and make spooky noises this turn. And as none of these aliens can attack this turn, I guess we will just reconsolidate our position somewhat. Our conversion beamer is going to back off a bit. Our other hybrids are going to move to protect him. And I guess our Gretchen will reposition as well. And that finishes a very uneventful turn for the alien player. It's the start of a new Terminator turn. There are a couple of things we want to do before we start activating models. First of all, we want to use 
our bioscanner. This lets us peek at three blips on the map. And we will look at those, an orc, a Gretchen and an android. Normally only the player with the bioscanner would be able to see those and they would be returned face down to the board, but it's just me here so let's leave them face up. The second thing I want to do is use a librarian power. I want to use teleport. This will allow my librarian to teleport to anywhere within this sector of the board. Why are we doing that? Because we want our librarian to take out the biggest threat on the board. Yes, that is not a great place for my librarian to be, surrounded by all those androids and hybrids, but I really want to remove this conversion beamer from the board. After teleporting, we do get to complete an action. We are going to punch this hybrid in the face. And we have rolled three. Not bad, not great. The hybrid rolls two white dice. And rolls double zero. The risk has paid off. We have killed the conversion beamer. Next, we're going to activate the Heavy Flamer. He is going to completely ignore that Gene Stealer for now because he wants to try and wipe out a few more hybrids. He moves four spaces to there and he is going to drop a Heavy Flamer shot directly in front of those two hybrids by the door. Rolling two red dice. He has rolled three. Hybrids have an armor class of zero, so we kill both. But there is still much more work to be done. My commander is going to take on this Gene Stealer in hand-to-hand -hand combat. One movement point to get into position, and we roll two red dice. We've rolled a three and a zero. We do get a re-roll. We are obviously going to re-roll that zero. And we've rolled a two. That is five in total. The Gene Stealer rolls two red dice in defense. And rolls double zero. It is absolutely pulverized. Nicely done, Commander. Nicely done. Two more Terminators left to activate. He moves to there, which puts him in line of sight to that hybrid. He attacks with a red and white dice. He rolls one, but one is enough. Hybrids have an armor class of zero. Hermiotus has run out of lackeys. Last Terminator. He's going to move in here. He's going to shoot the Gretchen. Gretchen at armor class zero. One is enough. And we roll three. Well, that went splendidly. It's time for the alien player to draw an event card. And honestly, things are going so badly for the alien player now. We have an android fault. You may not move or fire any of the androids or the dreadnought this turn due to a control malfunction. Absolute disaster. But let's do what we can. First, we have a Gretchen with line of sight to a heavy flamer. He is going to shoot two white dice. Double zero isn't going to do it so he's just going to move out of the way. Next, our missile launcher is going to move. He's moving down to there, and he is going to shoot the librarian at point-blank range. Two red dice, four successes for a kill. Three! Wow, that is so close. But at the moment, our luck is holding. I guess we may as well activate all of these blips down in the bottom left. Now, technically, although we know that one of the blips is an android and we are not allowed to move any androids this turn, at the moment, it's a blip, which means we can still activate it if we want to. However, as soon as that blip comes into line of sight and an android miniature is placed on the board, it will be subject to the rules of malfunction. Regardless, let's move this orc. It opens the door and it is immediately in line of sight, so is revealed. And Orcs are gonna Orc. It's going to charge into hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Heavy Flamer. Two white dice. Two successes. Not bad. The Heavy Flamer retaliates with one red and one white. And rolls double zero. The first casualty for the Marines. The Heavy Flamer is taken out by the Orc. For all my fancy equipment, there was nothing I could do about that. Never mind, we will make sure he sells his life dearly. We are going to make sure none of these aliens survive. This Gretchen is next. It moves to there and is revealed. And I think it's going to move into the green room. And while it's there, it's going to take a pot shot at that Marine. Three successes. That is so close. It pings off the Terminator's helmet. One more success would have been a kill and it would not be the first time that a Gretchen has taken down the Terminator in my Space Crusade games. This Android blip is just going to move over to there, and we have one more blip. 
three movement points gets it to there and it does come into line of sight of the librarian and it is revealed. It's a Chaos Commander, only it's not a Chaos Commander. The Chaos Commander blip represents Hermiatus. We have found him in the second room. Now for Hermiatus, you're supposed to use the Commander miniature, but where's the fun in that? I'm gonna use this old Patriarch miniature. He's far too big for the spaces, I don't care. We found him early. This could be anticlimactic. Let's mix things up just a little bit. I am altering the deal. Pray I do not alter it any further. If the Marines take down Hermiatus, the Marines win. That's that. If Hermiatus escapes the board, then he wins. That's that. How is he going to escape? Let's say there is an escape capsule here and he is going to use that to get away. Let's say that room up there is the escape capsule. If he can get through that door and into that room, he wins. The race is on. Hermiatus can move up to eight spaces. He has moved three. He has five spaces left to move. Hermiatus has a heavy bolter. He is going to use it to shoot the Terminator that is just in front of the door to the north. Two red dice. Double zero, that's a big whiff. We start a new marine turn and we want to throw everything we can at the wall. We are going to start by playing an order. We're going to use Close Assault, which allows my two Marines with Bolters to fire their Bolters and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the same turn. So first of all, we're going to use our Marine who has line of sight to that Gretchen. He is going to shoot that Gretchen. That's one, that is enough to kill it. He is then going to move, getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat with Hermiatus, where he will roll one red and one white dice. He's rolled two. Hermiatus has many limbs, he rolls two red dice. And he has rolled two, so that is a draw. Next, our other Marine with a Storm Bolter is going to shoot at Hermiatus. Hermiatus has an armor class of three. We need four successes for the kill. Three! So near and yet so far. But we can now close assault Hermiatus. We move two spaces. And we suffer not the Xeno to live. We are going to attack in hand-to-hand -hand combat and we are going to play Melter Bomb. This lets us roll an additional two red dice. That's a total of three red dice and one white dice. And we have rolled five, that is a good hit, but Hermiatus rolls two red dice in combat. There is still a chance he could win. And he rolls three, that is not enough. Hermiatus eats a melter bomb. I think we were supposed to be bringing him in alive, but I guess we will just bring him in in a bucket. We have Hermiatus. Let's just finish the turn and mop things up here. Let's move our commander into hand-to-hand -hand combat with the orc. He rolls two red dice. One success. But he does get a reroll from his digital weapons. And that makes it two. The orc rolls, nothing, and is defeated. Um, we still have our librarian to move. He is going to attack one of those androids in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Two red and two white dice. And he has rolled three successes. The android rolls, no successes. Really, the alien player has gone to bits at this point. And that is the end of the Space Marines turn. Technically, we could continue this mission. The alien player still has lots of reinforcement tokens they can use, and the Space Marines do need to get back to the docking claw. However, I think at this point, it's a bit of a wash. Despite my best efforts to add some extra drama at the end of this campaign, Hermiatus was found too early, he had nowhere to go, and the Marines still had too many powerful weapons to use against him. Even if the Melter Bomb hadn't done it, I still had the Librarian who would have probably stuck a Force Axe in his back. And so, Hermiatus is captured in a bucket and taken back to the Inquisition. It is all over. Well, not perhaps the gripping finale I had hoped for, but the campaign is over and Hermiatus has been brought to justice. Unfortunately, there were a few minor errors along the way, most of which I have annotated in the video, and none of which would have changed the outcome in any significant way. 
It has been a hot minute since I last played Space Crusade, and even longer since I did a playthrough on video, so it's easy for little things to slip through. The most common mistake was related to line of sight. It's actually very simple in this game, but there is a rule that miniatures will block line of sight for shooting, but they don't block line of sight for revealing blips. Straightforward enough, but when I am recording and narrating, it's quite easy to miss the exact spot where a blip should be revealed. Still, hopefully it didn't ruin your enjoyment of this final battle. And fear not, this isn't the end of Space Crusade on the channel. While I can't see myself trying to run any more full campaigns, and it's definitely time to retire the Terminators, I will still be making Space Crusade videos. At some point I will paint up my set, and I would like to get the Eldar's feet on the ground for a rematch to atone for their previous failures. But that is all for another time. Tonight you can sleep soundly, knowing the Imperium is safe. For now. Because in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. As always, if you like the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.